Hi there. If you've got a YouTube channel, periodically people might ask you to review things. And today I'm going to review this Infuray P2 Pro thermal imaging camera. Now the backstory to this is, a few weeks ago I was doing some insulation work at home and I needed a thermal imaging camera to see how effective the work was. And I did some videos on that, you might have seen them. And at the time I bought this thermal imaging camera with my own money real money, TC View topped on TC001 and it was putting out that video which then resulted in a request would I review this one, the P2 Pro. Well you can tell this isn't a fake review because nobody would do it like this. I have upgraded the studio table so I've installed the P2 Pro app on my phone, I've gone through the normal setup things you know option choice I've made sure that the on-the-go function is working. Sometimes on some phones there's a toggle to turn that off or on. Plug in the camera and I'll show you the app. Just to give us something to look at. Okay, I'm not going to go through every little function on the app. I'll just give you some idea of it. Uh, we need to get this done before that screw cools down. <laughs> so you can select different palettes. So we can have black and white and various others. So you get the idea. Okay. I'm, oh, that one looks interesting. What's that one? Oh, that's good, isn't it? Yeah. Different palettes. Uh, how do I get rid of that then? Probably that. And then you can measure temperatures at various points. So if I go to point and do say that, so P1 and up here it tells me 40 point degrees, 40 degrees, 39.8, 39.7. So you can see the temperature reducing. You can put a line on it and it will tell you across that line. So L1 is the line. So average 25.2, maximum 49.2, minimum 14.4. So that will be the background temperature in here. You can set a rectangle and it gives you details uh, within that rectangle. There it is. You can't read it because of the brightness behind, but it is there where I've got my finger. Uh, some of this I haven't tried yet. Scale. Oh, so now across the bottom we've got this scale. The reason I've got the phone on its side is simply because portrait doesn't work very well with landscape, does it? Um, but if I turned it on its side, then you would see this scale here. Lock, that's it, I've unlocked it now. And it will follow its own range. So the range will change. So the top of that is 65.4 and the bottom is 11.3. But if I move it off, that range will change 15.1 to 11.0 whereas if you press the lock you get a fixed range there you are so now you will get a fixed range I'll just quickly show you a couple of other things so we can take a photo so that now that picture has been saved but we can also take video so if I press run and I talk and I move around that's recording video now now one of the differences that I saw between this and the top Don was this one records the audio as well whereas the top Don did not seem to or I could not get it to record audio it comes with some instructions in this pack but I have to say they are a bit limited and also this USB cable so USB-C male and female extension basically so you can use this remotely now it does work on the pc as well but i couldn't get the colors it comes through black and white on the pc so maybe there was an app somewhere i couldn't find to download to the pc you just have to have a look for yourself the fact that the top don didn't seem to record audio with the video on my google phone might not make any difference to you but it does to me because if I'm making a YouTube video it's much easier if I can record the audio and the video content together rather than having to set up a separate microphone. 
I don't know. I'm just saying it's something I found between the two. Now, let's go into the house, try the camera with some practical stuff, see if we can find some central heating pipes and things like that. And if I can find something to look at, we'll put the magnifier on and look at a PCB, maybe in my computer, something like that. Right, so in the house, in the conservatory, I'm using the audio on the phone, so the audio quality might drop a bit, but hopefully this will be okay. And we'll go and find some central heating pipes. Well, this camera is the easiest thing ever to find the central heating pipes in your floor. Well, you can see there's a video recorder under there, under the TV, but see the pipes coming out into the floor. So there's a radiator to my right. Now this self scales, so it works over a range of temperature and automatically self scales itself. So that's why the colors are changing as the range is reducing. Now those pipes go off into our dining room, but do you see there, there's a really bright spot. So, you know, why would there be a bright spot like that? I don't know is the answer. You can see some pipes going over there further away from me as well that go to a radiator under the window. Well, if I ever had a problem, maybe I would be looking at that bright spot first. I don't know. This is showing our landing ceiling. And this was a surprise for me. You can see some places where there's insufficient insulation because they're the most deepest blue. So I need to crawl in there and do something with that sometime. You have no idea about that without a camera like this. More heating pipes, that's on the landing. That pillar is pretty hot at the bottom there where the uh, heat's coming up. But this is first floor, so that means upstairs in this country. So it doesn't matter that that's escaping um, into the air. This is in our cloakroom. The sun's on the window, so you can see that's nice and warm. But look at the wall. Can you see the block work? See the lines? Just picking that out from temperature variation. I might struggle to find a circuit board worth videoing, but look, here's the ring on my finger without the magnifier, and now we'll put that on. If I can find it, here we go. There you are. Now that is really useful if you need to find heat on a circuit board or something like that. Well, I hope that's given you a good overview of the P2 Pro. I will just say, I think the resolution on that camera was a little bit better than the top don that I've got. There's not really any difference between the functionality and the apps. They've both got quite a good, rich feature set. But maybe, you know, if you could find the two about the same price, for those three or four advantages, I might choose the P2 Pro now, particularly if you wanted that magnifier for looking at circuit boards and so on. But I'm not saying the top don is bad or anything. It was perfectly suitable for me. We're not really doing a comparison. It's just that I happen to have the two cameras, so I'm just saying it. Anyway, I hope that was useful. Thanks for watching.